Okay. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody, and good evening to you. Right, it's a blessing to be back with us once again to study the Word of God. I hope everybody's been having a blessed week and a safe week, and I pray that we have been praying for those who have been on our second, our shut-in list, as well as praying for our country, our church, our church family, and, of course, our pastor. So we thank you once again for joining with us again today in our lesson. Amen. So we're not going to belabor it. We're going to go ahead and have some prayer, and then we're going to uh, get after our lesson. Let us pray. To Lord, we thank you once again for the privilege to come this evening to study your word. We thank you for watching over us throughout this past week. We thank you, dear Lord, for your grace and your mercy and all the abundant blessings that you have bestowed on us. Thank you for taking care of us as we drive and walk through these uh, mean streets of Dayton, Ohio. We just pray that you would continue to let your spirit fall fresh on us, dear Lord, as we continue to do your work and to study and preach your word and teach your word. So bless now as only you can bless us, oh God. Uh, bless those who are sick, those who are shut in, and those who are in bereavement today. We continue to ask your special blessing and favor upon Deacon Sam Black and his family, dear Lord. Continue to bless Deacon Sam and touch him every way he stands in need. Let your spirit fall fresh on him, dear Lord. Restore him back to his normal self, dear Lord. Don't let him get weary in well-doing, Father. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise and the glory. We pray this in your name and for your sake. Amen. <clears throat> okay. Let us go ahead and get after it. Now, we're still on our series here dealing with talking about decision-making, discerning the will of God. Amen? Now, last week, when we uh, closed out our session, <clears throat> I told you we we're going to pick back up here where we was talking about, where I said I was going to share with you where God blesses uh, decisions that he initiates. God bless decisions that he initiates. And if you have your Bibles, if you look here in this uh, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 11 where it says, I guide you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. I guide you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. <clears throat> you know, the word of God tells us, I believe it's in Psalm 119 and 105, where he says, my word is a lamp to your feet and a light unto your path. You see, in God's word, it leads us and it guides us if we will follow it. And it keeps us from harm and danger. It keeps us from making uh, bad decisions and erroneous decisions if we uh, allow his word to lead us and guide us along his path. Amen. And uh, he also tells us there in that uh, talking about decisions that line up with his will. OK, we have to make sure that when we are making decisions, that our decisions lines up with his will. Amen. You know, sometimes we want our decisions is based on what we see and how we feel and things that we want. But we want our decisions to be to line up with his will. <clears throat> he tells us that at Psalms uh, 119 in verse 33 says, teach me, O Lord, to follow your decrees. Then I will keep them in the end. Amen. He says, teach me, O Lord. See, that's what God's word does. God's word teach us. Teach us to follow his decrees. And, and, and we'll find that many of our decisions that we make or, or don't make, if we made them, amen, uh, 
based on what the word of God says, then we'll find that we won't be, as dis we won't be so disappointed all the time. Amen? He says, then I will keep them to the end. You see? Not just keep them a few days and when things seem like they're running pretty good now, and then we're going to go back and do it and, 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 and do things our way the next day. No, we want us to follow them to the end. So because he sees, you see, uh, he, he sees God's word here as a path to be followed. Okay? He sees why David, he said he sees God's word here to, to be followed. Amen? As a path to be followed. A sure way through the wilderness. You see, and that's what that light does. It guides us through the wilderness. It guides us through the darkness and so forth. Amen. Now, and we have to follow that light. We have to follow his path. And if we follow it, we'll end up in the right place. So it's not <clears throat> much use asking God's direction if we don't remember them when they are given to us. Or if we don't follow them when we get them, it's just like the GPS in your car. Hey Amen. They give you directions which way to go. And if you if you decide to detour and go your way, then you might end up anywhere. Hey Amen. Or you might end up in an undesirable place where, where there's all kinds of traffic. The, the GPS, it, it, it leads us and directs us and, and takes us around traffic, takes us around where there's hazards and so forth, and gives us another safe path to go through. And that's kind of way what God's word is. God's word leads us and guides us. Amen. But if we don't follow it, then we are on our own. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So decisions that accomplishes his purpose. All right. That's what the word of God tells us there in that Philippians chapter two and verse 13, uh, where he says, it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Amen. It is God's work or words rather, you see, in you to will and to act according to his good purpose, you see. And that, that's always the best way. It's through God's good purpose. Amen? You see, decisions that depend on his strength. Okay, we can't do nothing without him. As that Philippians 4.13 tells us, he said, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Okay? We can do everything to him who gives us strength. Amen? God will not well, God will never give you anything to do that you can accomplish on your own. Amen? You see, he tells us there in that John, I believe it's 5 and 15, he says, without me, you can do nothing. You see? So we can't do nothing without him and his strength. You see? You see, I, I was reading there where uh, he, he gives us the strength that we need to do whatever it is that he wants to do. God will not give you anything to do without giving you the means to do it. Please listen to me carefully. You see, the J.C. Phillips translation uh, puts it this way. He says, I am ready for anything through the strength of the one who lives within me. Amen? From the strength of the one who lives in me. See, if God don't live in you, then you don't have his strength. Please listen to me carefully. Well, see, the, the living Bible the Living Bible puts it this way. It says, I can do everything that God asks me to with the help of Christ who gives me the strength and the power. Amen. Everything I can do, everything God gives me through his strength and through his power. You see, no matter which translation, of course, you prefer, they all say the same thing. Please listen to me carefully. You see, the Christian has all the power within that he needs to be adequate for the demands of life. We have it in us already. God gives it to us. We don't have no strength within in ourselves. Without him, as I said, we can't do anything. We need only to release this power, and re but we have to release it by faith because the word of God said without faith it's impossible to please him. So we have, that's how we release his power, is, through, through, is by faith. 
Okay? Now let us talk about decisions that gives him glory. See, we always want our decision, we want a decision that's going to give him glory. You see, right here in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31, it says, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Amen? Everything we do, it should be done for the glory of God and not for ourselves, or not to please other people, or not to please man. Amen? In other words, will what you do, will it only please you? Will what you do, will it only please you? Or will, it, or will they glorify Christ? Amen? We have to ask us that question. Everything we go to do, say, now, is this here something that's going to just please me? Or is what I'm doing, will it glorify Christ? Amen? Will they help win? Help to win the lost to Christ? Will it help win the lost to Christ or turn them away? Amen. Well, we need to ask ourselves that. Sometimes it's good to self-talk. Ask yourself these questions. You see, take your mind off of yourself sometimes and ask yourself: Is what I'm doing is it pleasing to the Lord, or will this please the Lord? Amen. Or before you go to a, uh, endeavor to do anything. Go and, ask, and pray. Ask God to give you wisdom about this thing. Ask God to give you directions. And then ask him is this, if, if this will be pleasing and glorifying to your name first. Are you with me? You see? So, so you see, so, 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 so the way that we use our freedom and relate to others it indicates whether we are mature in Christ. Amen? Strong and weak Christians need to work together and we need to do it in love to edify one another and to glorify Jesus Christ. You see? Do it together. See, sometimes we want to be the lone wolf. We want to do everything, you know, by, my, by ourselves so that we'll get the glory. All right? That don't please the Lord. Listen to me very carefully here today. Amen? You see, Jesus Christ. He said, so, so let us look at a decision here that promotes justice. Decisions that promote justice, kindness, and humility. All right? Malachi. Malachi 6 and 8. Malachi 6 and 8, where he says, He has showed you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? Amen. To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Okay? And to walk humbly with your God. Okay, now let, let, let us uh, break this down just a little bit here. Let's break it down. Okay? What the, what the prophet here, Michael, is actually saying. He is speaking... And he told the exact, and he told us exactly what the Lord wanted each of them to do. And he's telling us exactly what the Lord wanted each of us to do. Amen? He says it, it, it was a personal matter that each individual sinner had to consider. Okay? His reply emphasizes moral and ethical conduct. All right? not religious ceremonies. Now, of course, we can't do justly unless we have been justified by faith and are right with God. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Because Psalms uh, 32 and 1 uh, through 2 in the uh, American Standard Bible puts it this way. It says, how joyful is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Verse 2, how joyful is a person whom the Lord does not charge with iniquity and in whose spirit is no deceit. Amen? Whose spirit is no deceit. Uh, if you got your Bible... Turn with me, if you will, to Romans. 
Go to Romans for a moment. And we want to look at chapter 4 and verses 1 through 8. Romans chapter 4 and verses 1 through 8 here. And I'm going to read this from you, for you from the New King James translation. Look what it says. What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has nothing to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as a debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Just as David also described the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. That means impute, it means not to account it to your, to, to account your sins to you, amen? And you see, how can we lose, amen, amen? How, how can we love, in other words, how can we love mercy if we are not personally experiencing God's mercy? How can we do that, amen, you see? How can we do that according to Ephesians 2 and 4? You see, Titus 3 and 5. So if we want to walk humbly with our God, guess what? We must first bow humbly before him, okay? Confess our sins and claim his promises of forgiveness. He said in 1 John 1 and 9, if you confess your sins, he said, I'm faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and then cleanse you from all unrighteousness, you see. So, so, so you see, to make uh, Michael 6 and 8 a salvation text is to misunderstand what the prophet was saying to God's uh, disobedient covenant people here, okay? None of us can do what God requires until first we come to God as broken sinners who need to be saved. You see, unsaved people who think they are doing justly and love and mercy and walking humbly with God are only fooling themselves. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So, so no matter how moral you may be or you may think you are, not by works, righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. According to his mercy, according to Titus 3 and 5. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So decisions that reflect his character. See, decisions that reflect his character. When you make decisions or when we make decisions, does it reflect God's character? Amen. Look what 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12 tells us. Look what he says here. He says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in faith, and in purity. Amen. Set the example. You see, a Christian who wants to excel must really work at it. Amen? If you want to excel in the work of the Lord, or you want to excel in the word of God, you got to work at it. Amen? You see, God tells us in his word, he tells us not to be slothful. You see? Not to be slothful. Don't be lazy. You got to work at it. He said, by the grace of God and to get the glory of God. But you see, exercising ourselves in godly living is not only profitable for us, it is also profitable for others when we live godly. 
It's not only profitable for us. People look at us living godly and then see how we're living godly and how we're being blessed. Then they want that too. They'll look and say, well, I want what they have. So it's not only profitable for us, it's profitable for others too. And that's the way we have to look at it. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Just look at that first Timothy chapter four and verse 11 through 12 there. You see, it enables us to be good examples. And that's what we want to be. We want to be good examples, you see, so, 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 so that we encourage others. You see, we want to be encouragers. We want to encourage others, encourage them in our speech, encourage them in our actions, and encourage them in, in, in the way we, in our faith, in the way we treat each other. We want to be encouraging to others. You see, Paul named several areas of life in which you and I should be examples. Okay? In word, as he tells us there in that uh, uh, 1 Timothy 4 and 12, it implies that our speech should always be honest. Our speech should always be honest and loving, okay? Speaking the truth in love. That's what Ephesians 4 and 15 tells us. Speak the truth in love, you see? In conduct, all right? Now, the, the, the New King James uh, translation, amen, calls it conversation which means walk, not talk. Walk, not talk. Suggest is that our lives are to be controlled by the word of God. Amen? Our words should be controlled by the, our lives should be controlled by the word of God. And we must be like, must not be like the hypocrites, okay, that Paul describes to us over there in that Titus 1 and 16. OK, now they profess that they know God. But in works, they deny him. You see, that's, that's God. God's called them double minded people. You see, in love and charity, it points to motivation of our lives. OK, now we do not obey God to be applauded. Amen to men. That's not why we obey God. You know, uh, you remember over there in Matthew chapter 6 and 1? That's not why we do that. But because we love God and love God's people. See, you can't say you love God and then you hate your fellow man. You can't say I love God and then hate your brother. Because the Bible says you're lying, the truth ain't in you. You see, we can't do that. Now, in spirit, is not in many, this word in spirit, it's not in many manuscripts, but it would describe the inner enthusiasm and excitement of a child of God. So in faith, it implies that we trust God and we are faithful to him. Okay? And when we, when we are faithful to God, we trust God. Amen? Amen? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So faith and love, those two often go together. Everywhere you look in scripture, they, 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 they correlate to each other. They go together. Amen. 1 Timothy 1, 14, 2, 15, 6 and 11 and so forth and so on. Amen. You see, faith always leads to faithfulness. To faithfulness. It always leads to faithfulness. It leads to faithfulness in purity. Amen. Is important as we live in this present evil world. You see, Ephesus, for example, it was a center for sexual immorality or impurity. And the young man, uh, uh, the young man Timothy, he was faithful with all that temptation. You see, but he must have a chaste relationship to the, one, to, to, to the woman in the church. That's what he's telling us. He said, you must have a chaste relationship with the woman in the church. You see? In, in other words, it's, a, it's not a sexual type or, 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 or impure type of relationship. 
Amen. That's what he's talking about there in First Timothy 5 and 2. And he said, keep and to keep himself pure in mind, heart, and body. That's what God wants us to do. Keep ourselves pure. Keep ourselves pure in our thoughts. Keep ourselves pure in our heart and in our body. We shouldn't have our body all over the place doing all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff that don't, don't please God. Amen? But godly living not only helps us and others, amen, and, and other believers, it also has its influence on the laws. Amen? The lost world out there, they, listen, they watches us. It has influence on them. That's why we have to carry ourselves in a way. Amen? Because the world is watching us. Lost people watch us. And if they see us doing the same thing that they're doing, then they're looking like, well, there ain't no real reason for me to try to get saved and me try to get in somebody's church because the church folks are doing the same thing we're doing out here. Amen? The uh, only thing about it, they just being a hypocrite. They do one thing out here and do another thing in church and do another thing in front of people that they think are Christians, and then when they are around them, they're doing something a whole lot different. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So Paul reminded uh, this pastor here, Pastor Timothy, that Jesus Christ is the Savior. Right there in that Timothy, 1 Timothy 4 and 10. And it is the believer's task to share that good news with the lost. That's our task, is to share the good news of, uh, with the lost people of this world. Amen. And then we should do it with, uh, with meekness and not with heartiness, like we are more, you know, uh, more than they are. You see, people know when you're phony. People know when you're not genuine. You see, we should, 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 we should share that with them. Are you listening to me? In effect, he wrote, he says, we Christians have fixed our hope in the living God. But the laws have no hope and do not know the living God. So we are to show them the way. We are to be their light. Help them, help them to go in the right direction. That's why we have to carry ourselves in, in a godly way all the time. Not just sitting about in these four walls in church. Amen. You see, we have to do it where it matters at. And it's out there among those who are not saved. Amen? You see, all that many of them know are the dead idols that can never be saved. Amen? You, are you listening to what I'm saying? Now, the title here, of, the title, Savior of All Men. Now, that does not imply that everybody will be saved. Are you listening to me? In other words, talking about universalism, okay? I, or, or that God saves people in spite of themselves. For Paul added specifically of those that believe, amen, it is faith that, that, that saves one's soul, as he tells us in that Ephesians chapter two, in verses 8 through 9 and, and, and uh, down through verse 10. Amen? So since God will have all men to be saved, amen, that's God's will for all people, all men to be saved according to 1 Timothy 2 and 4. You see? Now, and since Christ gave himself a ransom for all, you see, then any lost sinner can trust Christ and be saved. Any lost sinner can. Don't matter what you have done, how bad it was, amen, God will forgive you and God will save you. According to 1 Timothy 2 and 6, God will save you. He wants all lost sinners to be saved. Are you listening to what I'm saying? All right. Give me just a few more minutes here. Now, uh, let us talk about decisions that come from faith. Hebrews chapter 11. Go to Hebrews chapter 11 in verse 6. It says, 
without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards who earnestly seek him. Amen. God reward those who earnestly seek him. He said, if you seek me, you will find me if you seek me with your whole heart. Amen. You see, sometimes we, what we call seeking, that, that's not seeking. You know, God said, if you seek me, seek means to look. It means to search. Amen. And you do it, and you do it with your whole heart. God said, I'll reward you. You see, our faith in God grows as we fellowship with God. Amen. So, so we must have both the desire to please him and the, and, the, and the diligence to seek him. Prayer, meditating on the word, worship, and discipline. All of these help us in our work with God. Amen. Enoch, he walked with God in the wicked world. Amen. He walked with God above the flood. Amen. Came. He was able to keep his life pure. Enoch was taken to heaven one day, translated, carried across. Amen. And seen no more. Abel died a violent, a violent death. But Enoch never died. He never died. God has a different plan for each and every one of us. Amen. Who trust in him. And that's the operative word, who trust in him. Amen. So, so some seen in the translation of Enoch a picture of the rapture of the church. You know, when Jesus Christ, when he returns, amen, as he tells us over in that first Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 through 18, amen, then there's the, the decision that considers the interest of others, okay? There's a decision that uh, interested uh, others, you see. Sometimes we, we have to make decisions sometimes that's going to interest others, and not just for ourselves all the time. Okay? Now, I'm out of time here, so I'm going to stop right here. And next week, I want you, I'm going to pick it back up right here in Philippians chapter 2. And, and, and we're going to uh, unpack that, okay? Next week, if you'll come back with me, this is where we're going to pick back up at. Here in Philippians chapter 2. Amen? Now... I hope this is making sense to us and I hope it's been a blessing to us because we all make decisions all the time. Amen. We make decisions every single day. Even when we decide not to make a decision, that is a decision. Okay. And we want our decisions uh, to be glorifying to the Lord. And we want to go and ask God and pray and ask God to help us when we're making decisions to lead us and guide us in the right direction. Amen? See, let all our decisions be based on the will of God. And many times we will find ourselves going the right direction if we base them on what the will of God is. Amen? And stop trying to go at it alone because we don't know what we're doing. Amen? We have to go to God and ask God to give us direction. Amen? You see, the Bible said, uh, let God order your steps. The steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. You see, and when we go to the Lord, whatever decision that we're trying to make or we need to make, go and ask the Lord to give us discernment. Give, us, give me discernment, Lord. Show me your will in this decision that I'm about to make. And then wait on the Lord to speak to your spirit. You see, he'll do it. Because he said anything you ask in my name according to my will, he said I will do it. So if you believe that, then trust God and then wait on him and watch how he'll bless you. Amen. That's my message to us today. That's my lesson. So may God bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine upon you. 
and may he walk with you and talk with you. Amen. So now we never shared out our lesson without sharing with somebody who might not know Jesus Christ as the pre pardon of their sin. And if that's you and you're with us today in this lesson and you know that you'll never ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, you can do that and you can do it right now. Amen. Just, but you said, the Lord tell you, he said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, amen, that he died on the cross and he rose again on the third day, amen, he said, if you believe that in your heart, he said, ask him, said, Lord, if you will forgive me of my sins, I am a sinner. And I'm in need of a Savior. I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died on the cross for my sins and you rose again on the third day. Would you come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior? See, when God talking about coming into your heart, he's not talking about that muscle. He's talking about your entire being coming into your person, coming into your soul. Amen? And, and just give it all to him, not just the part you think that he can deal with. He wants your whole heart, mind, and soul. If you ask him to do that, God will come in, and he will save you. Amen? And if that's you and you're listening to us, you pray that prayer. And watch what God will do. And I guarantee you, you'll never be the same. And you'll be forever blessed. Amen? That's my message to us today. May God bless you. May you have a blessed week, a safe week, and come back next week. And we're going to finish unpacking God's word here, talking about decision making, discerning the will of God. Okay? All right. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you once again for the privilege to come and study your word. We thank you for what you have shared with us today. We pray, oh God, that it has found uh, a place in somebody's heart, dear Lord and that they will use it and use it and use it all for your glory. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, dear Lord. We thank you for all your abundant blessings that you have bestowed upon us because they truly have been many. And we just thank you for uh, keeping us safe throughout the week, dear Lord. Thank you for, uh, we thank you for our president today. We thank you for our vice president. We pray that your blessings upon them today, oh God lead and guide them, O oh God, in the way that you would have them to go. Yeah, let them, dear Lord, come to you in faith, asking and when they're making decisions about whatever it is they, they need to do or have to do, let them come and ask you to give them wisdom, dear Lord. And you said that you would give it to them. So bless now, oh God, as only you can bless us and watch over us and bring us back as we come back and study your word. This we pray in your name and for your sake. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed week. And I'll see you next week. God bless.